I want to want to run something by you. Um, so more than a handful of years ago, I sleep with this on because my oximeter, because I wake up and I can't find it. And if, if I'm doing, doing really badly, I'm always curious to see if, uh, how low my oxygen is. Last night, man, I was all of a sudden started having, I was out in the living room in the chair, leaning back, watching a movie and uh, started getting stabbing pains in my head. Sure enough, my oxygen was starting to drop. So strange. Anyways, I wanted to run something by people. You know, when you grow up with uh, complex PTSD, you often have to ask, <laughs> ask other people, well, there's nothing wrong with asking people for opinions on a situation. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you know, when you have a really dysfunctional family, you, I'm, I'm probably asking people a lot more than normal people. So, um, I come from a family of six kids and mom and I were the closest. Mom and I were really close. Two really moody, emotional, two really moody sisters, one really covert troublemaker. So when we became adults, I, I did most of the hosting for, um, you know, once we had kids and stuff, I did most of the hosting for family celebrations other than mom, you know, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas and stuff. And, you know, my policy was, um, I was with, with my husband and my policy was, you know, any, everybody's welcome and anybody single, elderly, alone, anybody without a spouse and children, anybody is welcome. So, you know, um, uncle without wife or children, Girlfriends without a spouse, nowhere to go, without kids, um, a neighbor, without family, anybody is welcome, you know. And, um, and of course, all family and their partners. And, you know, I feel like my whole life, you know, my sisters just, you know, uh, instigator and underhanded and I feel like my whole entire life I was you know forced to or guilted out guilted guilted into taking the high road all the time and I think if we would have understood more about the behavior you know we maybe collectively would have tried to do something um but always everybody was invited no matter what and um you know no matter what took place all year long or no matter what what behavior was taking place every, it would it wouldn't even be a consideration to cut somebody out and un tell somebody they're not not invited well and and you know my sisters would never bring any food so so I would be cooking. Mom would help. Mom would come to my house. And we would be cooking for anywhere from, you know, I don't know, I'd have to count, maybe 18 people. My sisters wouldn't bring anything. They wouldn't contribute at all. Wouldn't bring buns, wouldn't bring anything. And they would never help with the dishes. And mom and I would be, you know, overwhelmed, like, most women are on Christmas. 
when you're hosting a huge lot. So that, and that was the history. And, you know, I, I was more of a doormat. And now I would, you know, now I'm assertive enough to say, you know, you have to bring something, you know, <laughs> I'm not doing all this work and you're coming and, you know, eating till you fall over and not contributing to anything and you have to help out. So anyways, there was some trouble in the family. Um, seven, eight years ago. I think my sister seized that as an opportunity and I was removed from the family. I was cut out of the family. My sister finally successfully did this. I think it was her. I, I'm not 100% sure. Really crafty, smart girl. My thing is my mother went along with this. And the thing is, you know, it's interesting because I looked this up. I, I googled this when someone has, you know, this type of, let's call it a health issue, what happens when the parents get older? My mother always said to me, she will never get to me. Meaning, you know, I'll never be conned by this person. I'll never be whatever. I'll never, you know, I'll never be brainwashed by this person. And there's literally articles written on this that once parents get elderly, they elderly, feeble, you know, I mean, my mother's almost 90. My mother's 88. And she, you know, she went along with us. And the horror that this w was for me, this was just, just beyond comprehension that I would be cut out of the family. I was no longer invited to anything. I'm still horrified that people have gone along with this. People have allowed this to ha the family has allowed this to happen. It's like, there's no sense of, th it's like people don't know what right from wrong. It's, it's inconceivable. I know my mom's elderly, but she went along with this and therefore I almost always have nothing to do with any of them. And it is abuse. Removing someone from your life, completely blocking them out, ignoring them, to hurt them is abuse. There's no other way around it. And they will flip it around on you. And, you know, there's times where they've pushed you to, to your limit and you're, and you're ready to snap and you start lashing out and you start, you know, saying things, terrible things and swearing and, you know, revealing their secrets. And, you know, you start lashing out because you've been pushed to your limit. Right. And then, and then when this, the whole story is presented to people. They'll say, well, she did this and that. She said this about me to people. And, you know, no wonder I did this to her. They'll turn it around and make it look like you've, it's all because of you, that you're out of control, your behaviors, you know, when, when you lashed out way, way, you know, far into the story, it's classic. It's all classic behavior. It's, it's like, a template is being followed. It's not, but I mean, this is just such classic abusive behavior and they will wait till you, you're ready to snap and lash out and they'll take screenshots of messages that you've sent out of anger or despair, or you're bawling and lashing out. So, you know, they have trained my mother. My, this is so not my mother. This is not my mother's behavior at all. When you have six kids, you don't, you don't behave like this. They've trained my mom to behave this way. They've trained her to ignore me. 
they've trained her to lie to pretend that they're not getting together for Christmas year after year, for Easter year after year, for Thanksgiving. They've trained my mom to behave this way. And I have have been very, and I'm still very angry with my mom saying, you know, I need a family. I'm sick. I need a family. Well, we're not getting together. She's lying. I, I can't tolerate any of it. So is it right to send me an email today and say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. How are you doing? After everyone got together yesterday for Christmas. It's nasty. It's it's gaslighting. It's evil. It's abusive. It's abusive for one of them to send me a text when they're all sitting there together saying Merry Christmas. I know my mom is elderly and a half, half, you know, partially out of it now. Like, part, you know, I mean, partially impaired from being elderly. And that's okay. But it's still gaslighting. It's still abuse. It's still, you're, you're enabling. You're enabling someone to be abusive. And, and by enabling and partaking, you are abusing. And my mom says, well, I can't do anything. It's not my house. Yes, there is something you say. You say right from the get-go, seven years ago, eight years ago, you say, oh, <coughs> one of my children's being excluded. Well, I'm not coming then. When you all get together, when you, you've mended your your fences, call me and let's all get together. You just refuse to partake. You don't act all innocent and, well, it's I'm not doing anything, so I was just, just not my, no, that's, you're being a flying monkey, you're enabling, you're enabling people to abuse another person. It's abusive to call me a day later and say, hey, hey, Merry Christmas. And they wonder why I, and you know, they'll, and then, you know what? It's all strategic. And then, you know, if anything, whatever, if I tell people about this, they'll, they'll send, they'll take a screenshot of their text or email saying, Oh, look, see, I wished her a Merry Christmas, but she didn't respond because she's all angry because she's this, because she's that. I tried. I wished her a Merry Christmas, but she refused to respond when literally they're all, you know, but the public, the out, to an outsider, they read that email and go, hmm, yeah, that was a nice polite email. I wonder why she didn't respond. Yeah, she must be angry. She, she must be the problem. It's it's smearing. It's a smear campaign and it's abuse. And to send me a text when they're all together or to send me an email the next day saying, hey, Merry Christmas. How are you doing? That's abuse. How can people not know right from wrong? How can so many people not know right from wrong? And it's not just me. It's loads of people out there. It's abuse. 